Hey guys, Crazy Computer here, and today I'm back with another video, and this is another educational video, as you guys liked my heart video ever so much. So um, today we're focusing on the periodic table, which is the chemistry aspect of things, and um, we're doing group 1, aka the alkali metals, group 7, which is the halogens, and group 0, which is the noble gases. So now if we move on to group 1, the alkali metals, so we've got the physical properties, which are they're good conductors, they're shiny when they're cut, or freshly cut, they're soft, so you can bite or cut them in half, and they are solid, but have relatively low melting points. Now, when they react with water, it produces an alkane metal hydroxide and a hydrogen. For example, sodium plus water um, gives off sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen, as um, the alkane metal and a hydrogen is given off. Now for reactivity. The reactivity of the alkali metals increases down the group, so... Lithium fizzes steadily, sodium melts into a ball from the heat released in the reaction and fizzes rapidly. Potassium gives off sparks and the hydrogen produced burns of a lilac coloured flame. Now density and storage. Lithium, sodium and potassium are less dense than water, so they float. They're also kept in oil to keep the air and water away. And that um, sums up group 1. Now moving on to group 0, the noble gases, which are chemically inert. So we have um, noble gases like helium, argon, krypton, and xenon. So for example, helium is used for, or helium is used for lifting gas in balloons and airships. Argon, krypton, and xenon are filling gas in filament lamps. They can all be used for that. And argon has another use, which is shield gas during welding. Now helium needs to have a low density and needs to be inert. It needs to have a low density so it can cause the um, airships or balloons to rise. And it needs to be inert so that um, when it's in an airship, it doesn't flam it doesn't flame up or explode. Now, argon, krypton, and xenon are filling gas and filament gases. They don't need to have a low density. However, they do need to be inert so the metal filament. Um, this is uh, the reason for the use is so the metal filament becomes hot enough to glow, and uh, it needs to be inert to stop the gases from burning away. Now, when it comes to argon, the uh, shield gas. It needs to be inert, but it does not need to have a low density. Argon is denser than air, so it keeps air away from the metal. It is inert, so the metal does not oxidize. Now, the chemical properties. Um, so, as I said um, previously, this is um, group zero are chemically inert. So their lack of reactivity is because their atoms have full outer shells of electrons, so they have no tendency to gain, lose, or share electrons. So here we have our table, which um, has the element and electronic configuration of three of the um, noble gases. So we have helium, has two electrons in the outer shell. Um, neon has two and eight, which is a full outer shell, and so has argon, that has two, eight, and eight. Um, so with electronic configuration, the first shell can hold two, and um, uh, the second, third, fourth, fifth, so on, can all hold eight. So this is a, these two are filled. Um, so now we're moving on to group 7, which is the halogens. Okay, so when a halogen reacts um, to metal, it um, produces a metal halide. For example, sodium plus chlorine equals sodium chloride. That's a halide. Uh, the sodium burns with an orange flame, forming a white sodium chloride. And then another example is iron wool reacts with the halogens when it is heated. For example, iron plus chlorine um, gives off iron-free chloride. The iron burns to form a dark purple solid. Now if we move on to the another table light which I've made, so we've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. These both come in twos because they're covalent pairs. Um, so fluorine is a um, gas at room temperature and has a pale, pale yellow colour. Chlorine is also a gas and has a yellow to green colour or yellow green colour. Bromine is a liquid and has a red reddish brown colour and iodine is a solid um, at room temperature with a dark grey colour. So now we've got the melting and boiling points of group 7. So going down group 7, the melting points increase as well as the boiling points, they also increase. The intermolecular forces between molecules become stronger, therefore more heat slash energy is needed to overcome them, because the bonds are stronger. Now if we move on to the reactivity, a halogen atom has 7 electrons in the outer shell, as it is in group 7, so that makes it less reactive. When a halogen reacts with a metal or hydrogen, each at halogen atom gains one electron to complete its outer shell. The less easy a halogen atom gains an electron, the less reactive it is. 
So now going down group 7, the reactivity decreases down the group, unlike group 1 where it increases. The outer shells get further away from the nucleus. There is more shielding by the inner electrons. The forces of attraction uh, between the nucleus and the outer shell get weaker, and uh, the electrons are gained less easily. Now halogen displacement. Uh, these are reactions where the more reactive halogen can displace a less reactive halogen from its compounds. Halogen displacement reactions are redox reactions. Uh, for example, when chlorine displaces bromine ions in a solution, so chlorine atoms gain electrons and are reduced to chlorine ions, as we can see here, and bromide, bromide ions lose electrons and are oxidized to bromine, as we can see here. So now we have the meanings of what redox and oxidization and reduction are. So oxidization is loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. These processes happen together at, and at the same time in redox reactions. That's why they're called redox. Metal displacement reactions are also redox reactions. So redox reactions happen at the same time. So where, where, oh, if I can speak, wherever there is oxidization, there is reduction. And that pretty much swiftly covers the whole um, um, video. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have liked the video, hit the like button, maybe comment and definitely subscribe as we are so close to 1,000 subscribers. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I'll see you dudes in the next video.